I don't need to do much more, right? I mean, I, I do enough. I go to church three times a week. But when we decide that that's where we're going to cut the line, God says, okay, I'll stop. God is a gentleman. He's not going to keep going past what you want him to go. That's, so when God's trying to get in our life, and he's trying to get that those, that goodness into our life, he's trying to get, I mean, God doesn't have a bad plan for you. He's not, he's not putting poison on your plate. He, he wants to bless you. He wants your life to be great. He wants to use you. And when we cut him off, that's it. Um, in closing, I just want us to notice the context of this. Who is who is this young king? Well, he's the son of a line. And um, in, in 1 Kings 19, uh, which is probably a, a familiar sounding passage to a lot of a lot of people here, it, it's whenever um, it's whenever Elijah gets discouraged. And he goes off in the wilderness, God has to comfort him. And he kind of throws in the towel a little bit. And, and uh, in verse 15, and the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. Now, this is a little bit of imagination. I hope it's sanctified imagination today, but <laughs> when, I, when I look through here, I, I just couldn't help. You know, later on, this is also the same passage that 1 Kings 19 where Elisha gets called. Mm-hmm. And this Hazel guy, he never gets... Later on in... Um, I apologize, I'm skipping around a little bit. 2 Kings 13, um, in verse 22, it says, But Hazel, king of Syria, oppressed Israel all the days of Je- Jehoahaz. In verse 24, So Haz- Hazel, king of Syria, died. And Ben Hadad, his son, reigned in his stead. Somebody should have killed that guy. Mm-hmm. He's been around for almost, he's been around since 1 Kings 19. Mm-hmm. How, look at all the kings. He outlived, I have a list here. He outlived Ahab, Ahaziah, Jehoram, Jehu, Jehoad. And that's just on the Israel side. He outlived all these guys. And he's still here. Mm-hmm. And this young guy, I can't help but Elisha's on his deathbed. And you know, he's praying. And this young king comes in, and he says the exact words that Elisha said to Elijah yeah. when he was being translated. And Elisha says, man, this guy wants it. He wants it. Yeah. Elisha knew about getting some, getting a blessing from God. Yeah. And, he, and he says, man, this, this young guy. And I can just see Elisha take bow and arrows. And, and this guy's obeying him. He's saying, man, maybe, this is it. maybe we can finally get rid of this guy. Maybe we can finally get rid of these Syrians who've been plaguing us for so long. Yeah. And Elisha starts getting excited. And Elisha says, take the arrows. And he says, it's just swipe. And he smoked rice and steak. And Elisha on his deathbed got to be saying, Man, this guy who's been around since I since I started the ministry, however many decades that had been, we had a chance here. Yeah. God could have taken, God could have, it, yeah. he says if he would have done just two more times, two or three more times, they would have wiped the Syrians out. Yeah. But what happened? Yeah. Jehoah said, that's enough. Three times? Come on. That's a spiritual number, right? That's a good amount. That's enough of my life, huh? You know? He said, that's enough. Simple challenge today. Where are you cutting God off in your life? Because where you tell him to stop, stop. That's good. Amen. I like you. Young men preach. Amen. That's what he needs. When I was a young man, there were preachers that gave me a chance, and I appreciate that. I love